Some of these guys got to go. The Reds need to make room on the 40-man roster before next Tuesday in order to protect players like Ellie De La Cruz and Noel V. Marte from the Rule 5 draft. We'll tell you who could stay and who could go. We'll also take a stroll down memory lane as our old friend Adam Dunn celebrates his 43rd birthday. We've got all that and more on today's Locked on Reds. Hit it, Jeff. You are Locked on Reds. Your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker. We are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that have turned an addiction to this team and to information for you. Locked On Reds is part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We are free and available on all platforms on today's podcast we are going to look at some guys who need to be cut and some guys who might you might think need to be cut but probably are not going to be and will still be on the roster come next tuesday and there's a couple of guys that we have some big questions about that we will start off today's pod with we're also going to celebrate one of my favorite all-time reds coming up later in the show but we've got to start off first with a Huge question mark, a guy that we are going to be talking about all off season in that, where does he fit on this team? And that's Mike Mustaka. Steve, when we look at next Tuesday, the Reds have some decisions to make because the 40 man roster currently sets at 39 players. They need to have at least six spots as we kind of figured out yesterday for some key prospects that they must protect from the rule five draft. And we got to start off with something interesting because if you go on reds.com and you look at the roster right now, Mike Mustakis is listed as a DH. He's not listed as an infielder, which seems poignant to me and a little bit of a clue as to what they might do with him. Yeah. Well, let's, let's be honest. They've just finally labeled him what we've been saying (laughs) <laughs> that he was for at yeah. least a year, probably two. And that's just, he has no business playing the field in the major leagues. Uh, he just can't do it anymore. Uh, him as a DH. I don't know that I read into that, that that automatically means they're done with him. Uh, you know, I think this thing with Mike Moustakis centers around the question of what should they do with Mike Moustakis and what will they do with Mike Moustakis? You know, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, he should be uh, gone. They should, they should cut him. Uh, they got to spend that money either way and move on. But we both know that Bob Castellini and the SOB, that's son of Bob, Phil Castellini, um, don't just give away money for people to do nothing. Uh, it's few and far between. You know, I know you like to use the Matt Kemp example as, well, yes, they do. But that was Dick Williams. Uh, that was a whole different era, a whole different time. So I think... By Tuesday, it's way too early for Nick Crawl or anybody else to convince either of the Castellinis that they need to write a check for $20 million for a guy to do nothing. I, I just I can't see it happening this early in the offseason. You're probably right that it's too early, but I, I think that this is an omen. I think that putting him, listing him as DH, and it's very possible that they did that because he majority played their last season. But I look at this and I say, this team is better off when the DH is used as a pseudo off day. Like you have said, we, we've talked about this many times on the podcast. When it comes to the designated hitter for the Reds, it should not be one guy. So if we're going to remainder one guy to the designated hitter spot, that would lead me to believe he's expendable. And yes, I know that it's a big check that the Reds would have to write, but they've already spent that money anyway. And when it comes to this year, this is his final year on the books. Could he get some value and you trade him for like a player to be named later? Sure. But I think at this point, he almost has to play so far over his skis to recoup that value that I don't think the Reds are going to do that. So I, I think that they've got to look at this very candidly this off season and say, do we need to enter the season with this dude on the roster? Yeah, I think trading Mike Moustakis is a kind of a fantasy at this point. I think uh, he's got to have I, a better pace than Brandon I, Drury last year. Yeah, and, and I, I don't see that happening, even no. if they only put him out there against right-handed pitching as a designated hitter. I just can't see him doing that. 
uh, with any consistency. Uh, to move him, I think you'd have to package him, and you'd have to package him with something like somebody really good. You'd have to package yeah. him with Brandon Williamson or uh, Stout and that or one of those pitchers, and it's absolutely not worth it uh, as far as any return you would get, but you know, it would save Bob $20 million. So, right. you know... <laughs> There's a chance, but no, I don't think they're going to do that. I I really think what's going to happen is is Mike Mustakis will ride out the last year of this contract in Cincinnati, taking up a roster spot. But uh, we could hope. <laughs> hope is our strategy. We've always tried to stay away from that. Yes. You know, our buddy, our buddy over there in in Virginia has told us that we shouldn't be doing that. But it, <laughs> that this is where we are now. That, that's but that's the key thing that kind of stands out to me is him being listed as a DH because the 40 man roster breakdown kind of flows like this. Uh, there's 39 guys, 23 of them are pitchers, 16 position players. You have Tyler Stevenson being the only catcher on the entire 40 man roster. You have seven infielders, seven outfielders and Moose at the DH spot. So that leads me to believe that they're probably most of the 40 man cuts will come from the pitching staff, but there's a couple of position players that I think we need to power rank because if you were to ask everybody in a vacuum, I think two of these guys get cut and maybe one of them gets kept, but I'd be interested to know how you rank and I'm going to give you my rankings, but I'll let you go first. Matt Reynolds, Alejo Lopez, Aristides Aquino, power rank those three guys. Who am I? How I rank them or how the Reds rank them? Because those are going to be two completely different lists. It's true. But it's true. but for me, I put Alejo Lopez at the top of this list. And, yeah. and it's because he plays multiple positions. He's a slap hitter that can get on base. He hit at a 300 clip for a large portion of the season while being jerked around by this organization for whatever <laughs> reason. So right. for me, I go Alejo Lopez. Number two, I go Matt Reynolds because of a lot of the reasons I just said about Alejo Lopez. He can play multiple positions. Totally. He can get streaky and get on base for you on occasion. Uh, he provides some value there. The bottom of this list is Aristides Aquino. I don't know what kind of dirt this guy has on somebody <laughs> in within this Reds organization right. for him to still get to go out there and play in the major leagues. He's Jeff, we know who he is now, and he is not the guy that came up and made that awesome entrance into Major League Baseball with all the home runs. That's not who he is. It was right. a fluke. The pitchers figured him out very, very quickly, and he has never been able to adjust. Now, I say that, they'll cut him, he'll go someplace else and hit 50 home runs next season. That's just the way it goes for us. But cool, I wish him well. But he doesn't need any more time in Cincinnati to try and figure it out. Yeah, Aquino's August of 2019 was obviously the greatest party ever because the Reds have still not shook that hangover. They still continue to figure out what to do with it. And I think that that is kind of going to be an ominous sign because I think if they cut him, they show us that they're going to make a move and try and bring in an outfielder because he is the right-handed platoon to all of these lefties that they have out there, the F troop. The problem is if they keep him, then they're going to tell us they're not making that move. They're not going to go out and get an AJ Pollock. They're not going to go out and get a right-handed dude that could help make an impact on a platoon way. And, and I think that that is the part that's going to bug me a little bit, at least I, I and maybe they DFA him for a move, but I, I think that they probably end up keeping him. Whereas I think most people think as you and I think that it's time to move on. I also wonder because I love Alejo Lopez too. We, we are locked on res is a noted Alejo Lopez fan podcast. We love this dude. He, uh, everything that he puts out there on the baseball field, but I think for some reason the reds don't, and I don't know why, because he could be very valuable to them. So I think that Matt Reynolds, if you're looking at the reds rankings is probably the guy that gets kept out of these three um, if, if, if they cut any of them, there's a very good chance that they keep all three and we'll tell you why here in just a moment. But I, I do think if we're looking at this, I think personally, I agree with your rankings, but I think that the reds rank it, Matt Reynolds, Aristides Aquino, Alejo Lopez in their which power is, rankings, which is backwards. It's just so crazy. <laughs> and, and one other quick note on Aristides Aquino, Jeff, let's not forget that he since that amazing month in August of 2019, he's already cleared waivers on two separate occasions. <laughs> That's true. They can take him off of the 40 man roster and keep him around while they figure out what's going to happen next. I don't really think anybody's going to just take him at this point because everybody's had an opportunity to do that twice already. 
That's true. It's it's a gamble, and we mentioned that adding players was a gamble. This is a different gamble, taking players off and and who could and and could not be kept. And you know, there's two relief pitchers that I think um, are part of the question, and then there's like five other relief pitchers that I think are obvious cuts, which I think we'll dive into here in just a moment. But based on the moves the Reds plan to make for the offseason, they will need to make some tough decision on these fringe dudes that are still currently on the 40 man roster. You know, and and as you say, there are about five players that are obvious moves that the Reds should take off the 40 man roster. We're going to get into that. We'll tell you who it is coming up right after this. But before we talk about that, I want to talk to you about Simply Safe. Today's broadcast, today's podcast is brought to you by Simply Safe. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure during the holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Here's why we love Simply Safe it's super customizable. Uh, it's not a situation where you have to purchase a bunch of things that you don't need or that you don't want in order to get the things that you do want. The system integrates well into your home and is easy to self-install. No need to have a tech come out. You don't have to schedule something and sit around all day between 8 and bedtime in order to have somebody come in. Uh, they don't have bulky units that damage your place. They don't mess up your wall. They don't throw off your design. Everything just blends in seamlessly. Uh, if you decide to move, you can move the system with you after you install it. The elements are easy to remove, pack them up, take them with you, and put them in when you reach your new place. Uh, you can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. You can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, coming up tomorrow, uh, Jeff and I are going to be right back at it, and it is escaping me what tomorrow's episode is going to be. Jeff, Jeff, get in here. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. What are we Nick talking Lodolo. about tomorrow? We're, We're talking, talking about Nick Lodolo. About Nick Lodolo. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Someone failed to write Nick Lodolo's name in the rundown after we decided <laughs> to do that. I think that was me. We're going to talk about Nick Lodolo tomorrow. Uh, we're going to take a look back on his spectacular rookie season. We're going to talk about the things he did right. We're going to talk about all of the stuff he put together and figured out. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the things we want to see him do in the offseason and what we are expecting out of him in 2023. So that is on tomorrow's show. It's going to be a fun conversation. We are both huge Nick Lodolo fans around here. Uh, Nick Lodolo is not getting cut, Jeff, but there are some guys that are pretty obvious cuts uh, for the Reds to make in order to clear these spaces that they need before next week, Tuesday, in order to protect the guys from the Rule 5 draft. Yeah, and they're all relief pitchers, Steve. I, I don't look at uh, – the Reds have 23. We, we noted this, 23 pitchers on the 40-man roster. And I think that this is where you've got to look because there are some guys that either didn't get into very many games or the work that they put in just wasn't very good. And then there's one dude who, again, kind of like Alejo Lopez, I don't think the Reds like him very much, and, and, and we'll get into him in just a moment. But I wanted to start it off first with Kyle Dowdy. He – yeah, that that's guy's not a real, on the that's 40 not a real guy, Jeff. Who he pitched in two games, Steve. I'm surprised that you uh, forgotten him. Those were two very memorable games in which he compiled uh, 6.1 innings, and he didn't give up a run. There, there was, there was that. Now listen, um, with, with when you have a baseball team that makes you drink as much as this baseball team makes <laughs> us drink, you occasionally miss a guy or two. Yeah, and I think it tells you all you need to know about a year in which just about everybody, including you and me, got on the mound. Uh, this Kyle Dowdy only pitched two games, so I think he's a cut from the 40-man roster. Another guy that I look at as an obvious one is Jared Solomon. Jared Solomon, and, and I feel like I saw Doug talk about him a little bit and saying that he's got some stuff. But he didn't show it. He, he had eight and a third innings. He gave up 10 earned runs. He had three homers allowed. Did have nine, nine strikeouts, Ks. though. Nine Ks, Jeff. Nine Ks. Stop with this disparaging stuff. You know, you always <laughs> hate on the talent. Jared Solomon, you hate, hate on, on Jared Solomon. Solomon. You hate on Jeff Hoffman. You know, you're you're bitter about something <laughs> with these guys. I don't understand. Hey, 
I wanted to go on record. I did not list Jeff Hoffman in any of these potential cuts. Uh, also, <laughs> let's look at back at the guys we're talking about here. One dude that I really wanted to see more of, but is whenever he was healthy, he was just very up and down. He's very inconsistent, and he had a big problem with walking a lot of guys is Art Warren. I felt like Art Warren was a guy that we labeled as a big-time dude last year. We really did expect a lot more out of Art Warren than we got. And I think I think Art Warren has shown enough flashes over enough period of time that the Reds are going to try and keep him around, especially in a bullpen that has a lot of question marks heading into 2023. You know, this is a guy that's proven at times he can pitch at the major league level. Uh, he has proven that he has the ability to figure it out. So hopefully Derek Johnson can spend a little time with him uh, out in Goodyear at the beginning of spring training and get him dialed in a little bit more. I kind of wonder if his combination of injury and inconsistent performance when he is healthy would make him a better gamble to cut off the 40 man and not see claimed. But that's the only thing that I can think of there because I'm with you. I still think he has the talent. It's just, you know, he wasn't healthy last year. So it's hard to say when we just didn't see him. Mm -hmm. another guy that wasn't healthy at all because he only pitched a couple of times. And I remember he broke camp with the bullpen was Daniel Duarte. He was famously included with Alexis Diaz as the last two dudes on the roster. Now, one of those guys is far and away the Reds bullpen ace. The other guy. I think we're probably going to cut him. He allowed three runs on a homer and three walks in two and two thirds innings pitched last year. Now it was his elbow that kept him out. It wasn't Tommy John, but it was just the kind of lingering elbow issue that he just never pitched again after he pitched a couple of games in April. See, this is a guy that you have on the list that I, I absolutely don't think they're going to cut yeah. uh, for all of the reasons that you just said, they saw something in him last spring training and he really never had an opportunity to deliver on it. Uh, like you say, two and two thirds innings before the elbow injury basically shut him down for the year. Uh, I think that they're going to keep him around. He'll go into Goodyear with an opportunity to make this bullpen again. Uh, because again, this, this pitching staff uh, is in the shambles as far as the bullpen goes. And Derek Johnson has already seen something in Daniel Duarte because he already you know, made a case for him and got him placed on the active roster at the beginning of the 2022 season before the bullpen was in horrid shambles. I mean, it wasn't great. Uh, they didn't really upgrade it, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as it was uh, towards the end of the season. So they, they have something that they believe in with Daniel Duarte, and I think they're going to keep him around and try and see uh, if he can deliver on it. So that's interesting. So that's two guys. Um, I, I honestly, I do think that they would cut Duarte and um, Art Warren, but you disagree. So we have a couple of guys that we can slot in there, but one other guy, and I think this dude's getting cut. And I think it's probably that he's going to get cut and he just doesn't get claimed and he remains in the minor leagues. But that's Dari Moretta. Dari Moretta, for whatever reason, I feel like we have seen something from him. There's something in his game, the ability to get that strikeout. And he had a nice strikeout to walk ratio last year, but he had a huge problem with the homer, the long ball. He gave up 10 homers and 35 appearances. It just doesn't feel like the reds want him. Yeah, I, I agree uh, with you on this one. I think they're going to uh, designate him, pull him off the 40 man roster. Uh, and ag again, in a season where the pitching staff was in complete shambles, Moretta didn't get very much of an opportunity. And I mean, Listen, they ran some guys out there that had no business being on a major league baseball field. And if you can't get a call up ahead of those guys, it says a lot about what the organization thinks about you. So I, I agree with you on this one. I think that will remove him from the 40 man roster. And then I think it's a coin flip 50 50, whether or not somebody takes him, because like you and I have talked about, these relief pitchers are just all over the place. They're crazy. Yeah. They one season, they're great. One season, they're not. Suddenly they figure it out. They're awesome. And then they lose it again. And you just never know what you're going to get from year to year with most relief pitchers. So, I, you know, another team may take a flyer on him in the rule five and stick him on the active roster. Uh, he has some major league experience, not great experience, but he has experience and they take him. He pitches great. They keep him. He is terrible. Dowry Moretta, they cut him and he comes back to the reds. So that brings into question then, because I had five guys listed and you said that two, you don't agree with, and that's fine. But 
I will say this, they're probably going to make those two, those other two cuts. So we have three cuts right now. Those other two cuts are going to be relief pitchers. So that would then lead me to ask you this, unless there is a surprise cut that we just don't see, that's not a relief pitcher. Who are you keeping? You have to keep two of these four. We've already said Art Warren and, um, Daniel Duarte. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so Art Warren, Daniel Duarte, or Ian Jabot and Derek Law. You can only keep two of them. Oh. I don't think that they're cutting like a Jeff Hoffman over one of these four. I don't think I don't think they're making a moose decision over one of these four. No, and and you know, Derek Law is an interesting an interesting yeah. conversation. He could almost be a whole segment by himself, Jeff, because I don't know if we saw enough that I, I just I really don't know. I think that um Ian he's Jabot bounced is, around. He's he's kind of been a journey. I I think you could take a risk with Ian Jabot as well because I mean he pit he pitched okay, but I mean it didn't really take a whole lot to get him here. He's not valued that highly around the league. Um, you know, I, I maybe I run the risk of of cutting him, dropping mm -hmm. him off the forty man roster, and if it's those guys, if I have to pick from those guys, maybe it's maybe it's Law and Jabot. I think maybe those are the guys. Cause that's where I was with it too. But honestly, kind of what you said about Duarte does intrigue me a little bit as well, because they talked about him in spring training and we know that you don't really learn much from spring train, but they were talking about his career arc and what got him to this point and the work that he's put in. And I'm, I'm intrigued to see if that continues with the reds or if it goes somewhere else. But I was thinking this when we were talking about dowry Moretta, it's very obvious that relief pitching is a fickle thing because do you remember CNL Perez? He <laughs> oh, was <yeah. laughs> awful as a red. He went to Baltimore and Lit blew it. up. Yep. Oh my gosh. Was he good last year? Anyway, Which, that's and, just, and, and that's who I kind of have in mind when I'm talking about Dowie Moretta, you know, yeah. they can, some team can take a flyer on him and he's either great Dowie Moretta or they cut him. And the only consequence of that is he comes back to the reds. Yeah. It's it's one hundred percent true. Big, these are the guys that I, I mean. I think that we make five reliever cuts, and that at least gets them to the point where you know you can at least add the prospects that they need to protect. There may need to be a couple more moves if they want to be active in the Rule Five Draft, which they will have a high pick if they choose to be active. But today is one of my all time favorite players' birthday coming up. We're going to reminisce on the career of the big donkey. Before we do that, though, I want to let you know that you can follow us in between shows on Twitter. You can follow Steve at S Offenbaker with two Fs. You can follow me at Jeff Carr with three Fs. And you can follow the show at Locked On Reds. Also, make sure you're following us right here on YouTube. If this is your first time watching us, thank you so much. Make sure you leave us a comment down below, some thoughts. Maybe you have a question or something like that. And never forget that in the comments section on Fridays, Aloha Fridays, we are going to have another live episode that's coming up this Friday in which you get to drive the ship. You get to ask some questions and kind of see where it takes us about this Cincinnati Reds off season all right happy birthday adam dunn i should have worn my adam dunn jersey now that i'm thinking about it. i don't know why i just now thought about that but because that still... cardigan you had on cut off all the blood supply well, it to was your head. cooler this morning it's just i don't know and now it's warm and i'm like rolling up you know rolling up my pants and all this other stuff anyway uh happy birthday adam dunn he was one of my all-time favorite players and i never think he got full credit for just how awesome he really was you know, Adam Dunn was on the leading edge of these uh, way everybody plays right now. You know, yes. the 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 dip in the swing, hit the long ball, a lot of strikeouts as a consequence of that. But, you know, I think Adam Dunn was on the front edge of that group. And listen, here's a surprising number. And and I didn't realize, you know, Adam Dunn, his birthday today, he's only 43 years old. It feels like forever Make ago. Come back. He, listen. You say that jokingly, but I bet you that he could come back right now today and put up the same numbers that a lot of these outfielders for the Reds put up in 2022. Not a big stretch. You know, Adam Dunn during his time in Cincinnati, I took everything else out for these numbers, Jeff. Uh, we're just going to talk about the eight years that he played in Cincinnati. 
uh, that's a hundred, that's a thousand and eighty seven games during that time, 270 home runs, 646 RBIs. Here's where it gets a little interesting. Uh, slash line of 247, 380, 520 for an OPS plus of 130. That's right. During his time as a red, he was 30% above league average. And I don't think we give him credit for that. And I'll tell you this, those numbers, Jeffrey, I would take them right now in this outfield compared to, I don't know, Aristides Aquino. 520 slugging? Oh, 520. Yeah. And, and, and let me say this. If your understanding of a player stops with the number, you know, 247, then you're nice friendships on the fritz. Because if you think of Adam Dunn as only his batting average, you are missing 95% of who Adam Dunn was. Sure, he wasn't good defensively. I don't really even care about that. He was the guy in the middle of the order that every pitcher worried about. And he is the guy, the first guy, if you have ever gone to a game at Great American Ballpark and you look at the Toyota that's sitting a million miles away from you and you look at that and you say, who could hit that truck? He's the first guy you think of, period, because he's about the only guy that could do it. Mm -hmm. uh, first, he hit one into the river. He yep. hit he hit many over the batter's eye in center field. Yep. Uh, he lot of raw power. Uh, he had the kind of power that we uh, like to hope right now that a guy like Reese Hines continues yes, to hang on to. You know, Reese right. Reese Hines is a guy that has that kind of power. And you know, when we talk about players, Shran, hope. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when we talk about these guys with this raw power, uh, you know, you can look to Adam Dunn as an example of what, you know, what that big league career could look like. And and I really hope that people would would look at Adam Dunn's time in Cincinnati through the correct lens, like you're saying. Yes. You got to look past that 247, which I mean, right now I would take that 247. Uh, I mean, look at what our catchers put up this year. And then that 247 <laughs> is sexy, baby. Yeah. It is sexy. But yeah, 520. Jeff, I'll take that in the lineup every single day of the week. Well, and you're talking about a team too, Steve, that just had the hardest problem hitting a home run and they did it in the second easiest park to hit home runs in. Like, uh, I don't, I, I get it that, you know, you go through spells where your lineup's just not that powerful, but Brandon jury finished the season as the home run leader on the team. And he didn't play for the team for two and a half months. Like I, I don't, I don't look at this and I say it all that I think that what the reds had was adequate, especially like if you look at some splits and things like that, just looking at by position, the way that the reds say, I know we talk about catcher and we, we say, oh man, catcher was a struggle for the reds, but even just right field, right field as a whole did not play for 213, 271, 385 with a 656 OPS. Like they had 22 total home runs in right field. Adam Dunn I think right now would hit better than that. I don't know, he'd have to put down the two beers. I don't know if, if you've seen <laughs> yeah. any of Adam Dunn's retirement yes. pictures, he's always double fisting beers and I and I Legend. love him for it. But, you know, I I guarantee you there is some beer league softball team like reaching out to him right now like, "Hey, those numbers are pretty good. Let's get him down here." Uh, I think he can park one over the fence. Uh, I don't know. I, I really, I really think Adam Dunn is another in a, in a, on a list of players that were undervalued uh, during their time in Cincinnati. We talk about this with Joey Votto all the time, that there's not a real appreciation uh, for what he's been able to do here in Cincinnati. And I think Adam Dunn might be the very next guy on that list as far as players that did some significant things while they were here. And it just, it was missed. It was just undervalued, you know, whether that was from uh, certain voices in the broadcast booth, you know, knocking him down a little bit or if you know it was just because he was a little bit ahead of his time in the way he played his game and you know i think it could be both of those things for adam dunn a little bit ahead of his time voice in the broadcast maybe didn't talk him up as much as they should have or could have and as a result a people too. don't appreciate yeah. him yeah yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with you because Adam Dunn, I think right now could bring some value to the Reds right field position in 2023. I love Adam Dunn. Always will. Happy birthday to the big donkey. And Steve, with that, that's going to wrap us up for this edition of the Locked On Reds podcast. Coming up tomorrow, we are going to dive into Nick Lodolo and why we think he is the opening day starter for 2023. Steve? 
it's, I, I tell you what, man, like this dude, he's so talented. You're not going to miss it. We're going to have a lot of fun talking about Nick Lodolo. Thanks for making us uh, your first listen of the day. Now go make Locked On Sports today your second listen as they have you covered in 22 minutes or less with the biggest stories in the sporting world each and every day. Locked On Sports today is just like Locked On Reds. It's free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube. Steve, the big donkey's 43. The Reds got some cuts to make on the roster. So what's that mean for you and me? Are you wearing a shirt? I mean, I can take it off. Do you do you think Scott Hatterberg's a good baseball player? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Adam Dunn and his banana phone appearance. <laughs> yeah. If you've not heard that, get on YouTube right after this show. Google it. Uh, Adam Dunn with one of the so, all-time legends. Adam from Milwaukee. Phone. Adam <laughs> from Milwaukee. Jeff. As this season continues on, the offseason, we're going to continue to be watching the transaction wires. We're going to be following the news from around the league as we move towards the draft, as we move towards the winter meetings, as we move towards Reds Fest. We're going to be dialed in. We're going to be here every single day so that uh, our listeners and our viewers can stay locked on Reds every single day.